Around the World in 72 Days is an 1890 book by journalist Elizabeth Jane Cochrane, writing under her pseudonym, Nellie Bly. The chronicle details her 72-day trip around the world, which was inspired by the book, Around the World in 80 Days by Jules Verne. She carried out the journey for Joseph Pulitzer's tabloid newspaper, The New York World. Topic. Journey In 1888, Bly suggested to her editor at the New York World that she take a trip around the world, attempting to turn the fictional around the world in 80 days into fact for the first time. A year later, at 9.40 a.m. on November 14, 1889, she boarded the Augusta Victoria, a steamer of the Hamburg-America Line, and began her 24,899-mile journey with the goal of finishing in 75 days. She brought with her the dress she was wearing, a sturdy overcoat, several changes of underwear and a small travel bag carrying her toiletry essentials. She carried most of her money 200 pounds in English bank notes and gold in total as well as some American currency in a bag tied around her neck. The New York newspaper Cosmopolitan sponsored its own reporter, Elizabeth Bisland, to beat the time of both Phillies Fogg and Bly. Bisland would travel the opposite way around the world. To sustain interest in the story, the world organized a Nellie Bly guessing match, in which readers were asked to estimate Bly's arrival time to the second, with the grand prize consisting at first of a free trip to Europe and, later on, spending money for the trip. On her travels around the world, Bly went through England, France, where she met Jules Verne in Amiens, Brindisi in southern Italy, the Suez Canal, Colombo in Ceylon, the Strait Settlements British territories of Penang and Singapore on the Malay Peninsula, Hong Kong, and Japan. The development of efficient submarine cable networks and the electric telegraph allowed Bly to send short progress reports, though longer dispatches had to travel by regular post and were thus often delayed by several weeks. Bly traveled using steamships and the existing railroad systems, which caused occasional setbacks, particularly on the Asian leg of her race. During these stops, she visited a leper colony in China and she bought a monkey in Singapore. When Bly got to Hong Kong, she learned that Elizabeth Bisland was in the race. <laughs> <laughs> Homecoming As a result of rough weather on her Pacific crossing, she arrived in San Francisco on the White Star Liner Oceanic on January 21, two days behind schedule. However, world owner Pulitzer chartered a private train to bring her home, and she arrived back in New Jersey on January 25, 1890, at 3.51 p.m. Bly arrived back in New York 72 days and 6 hours and 11 minutes after leaving Hoboken. At the time, Bisland was still going around the world. Like Bly, she had missed a connection and had to board a slow, old ship the Bothina in the place of a fast ship Etruria. Bly's journey, at the time, was a world record, though it was bettered a few months later by George Francis Train, who completed the journey in 67 days. By 1913, Andre Jaeger Schmidt, Henry Frederick, and John Henry Mears had improved on the record, the latter completing the journey in less than 36 days. In popular culture In season 5, episode 7 of Boardwalk Empire, set in 1897, the character Gillian Darmody reads aloud from this book, the only one she owns. Topic: See also A Boy Scout Around the World, a 1928 book based on a similar idea.